So hi, my name is Cujo. A lot of people older than me and people in, I guess, society in general like to talk about how life is so short and fleeting. One of the first people I had ever seen say anything of the contrary is a guy named Seneca from like 50 AD, I think is around when he died. He's pretty goddamn old. He's from Stoic philosophy. Seneca was a politician in Rome. He studied a lot of philosophy. Seneca was accused by the empress of Rome of having a adulterated affair with one of her daughters, from what I understand. And he was cast to exile, and then he made most of the content of the book that he wrote called on the shortness of life which is going to be where most of the ideas that i talk about in this video come from but i really really respect seneca as a philosopher i love this book and i highly recommend it uh, if you're not interested though just keep watching the video i'm just going to give just a general summary of the ideas that i picked up so the book is broke into three sections one section is on the shortness of life which is an essay that he wrote self-titled another was called a consultation to helvia who was his mother i hope i said her name right and the third is on the tranquility of mind to help his friend serenus i hope i said his name right too but immediately i'm going to just talk about on the shortness of life to start out with seneca says that people on the most part are stingy with their materials yet they give out their time freely, which is extremely ironic, he says, because the material, there's like a plentiful of material and a lot of resources are renewable and time is the only limited resource that we have. Eventually, we're going to die. So since time is not a renewable resource, uh, it's not something that we can let people waste or to spend that time repeating the same sins over and over the same mistakes that don't better towards a life that we want for ourselves he talks about how people waste time chasing external things like money or power or the new house that they have or the next best thing but the upside to exchanging your time correctly he talks about is philosophy philosophy transcends the nature of humans and exchanging knowledge with each other and approaches to life actually adds years to your own as you learn not to make the same mistakes that someone else had made and learn from their mistakes and then therefore you add experience onto your own. This is why education is so important, why books are so important, art, and anything that honestly helps another person or helps you is pretty productive. And not in the terms of short term, it just adds to the longevity of your life. He says that our ideas and sharing the ideas is what makes us immortal with each other. Which if you think of Seneca, Seneca is about 2,000 years old and his ideas still live on that he shared. In a way, he's immortal. Maybe not in his own personal experience, but in his ideas and the things that he stood for and believed in still exist to this day. But one thing that I still think is true from this time, clear until today, is that people don't really consider how they trade their time for like status and security at the cost of a varied experience in life and realize this in their old age and then end up having like midlife crises or crises in their old age. They try to cling on to their youth when actually moving on from youth to an older age, there should be acquired wisdom and it should be celebrated instead of trying to be young. Like there was a time for it, but as you age, you gain wisdom in the exchange for youth. At least that's the idea. That's what you want to spend your time doing, or it's a good idea at least. I guess you don't have to spend your time doing that. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. This is just a recommendation. To boil down this essay though, you should just really take what you value into question and then move towards what you actually value and not let people or the outside world tell you what should be important to you. You should spend the time doing the things you love. Next, I'm going to talk about his consultation to Helvia. When he was exiled, his mother was very distraught at him being exiled, as makes sense, you know. I'm sure my if I was exiled, my mother would probably freak out too. But Seneca states that being exiled is impossible because uh, Seneca's mind and lifestyle follows him. He pokes at the act of him being exiled, saying that humans constantly move to different locations, aimless most of the time anyway. Therefore, him being exiled is kind of a silly punishment because his mind followed him. He says in the book that he's going to turn his hut to his own sanctuary with his routine still being actualized and intact. Most men in society don't actually realize their ability to entertain themselves. He tells her that wealth is a plague on the weak mind. 
and a healthy, strongly curated mind has no preference on money or not. It doesn't matter if he has the wealth or not, as long as he can continue to do his life's work. That's what's actually important to Seneca, and personally for me too. I honestly don't care if you watch this video or not. To me, spreading this message is probably the most important thing I can do with my time right now. So this is... Over everything else, this is what I would prefer to be doing with my time. He also tells her that once you understand desire, reason will conquer desire, and it won't tug you around aimlessly. Also in the consultation to Helvia, he talks about the traits she has as a mother. She's a very caring mother, has a lot of responsibility, and talks about how strong she is. I mostly took notes that I took away for my own life, but to hear Seneca's mother and him talk about his own mom was honestly really sweet. And it's also very sweet to think that Seneca used philosophy to try to also comfort his own mother. He also talked about how people are aggressive and spiteful to try to get a rise from you. And if you don't let it affect your response and emotional state, it becomes the most empowering. Because that means that you can't be pushed around by other people or the external world. But in the last attempt to comfort his mother, Seneca talks about how being exiled is actually a blessing in disguise for him. Uh, he has the richest in experience to remain alone and ponder man, nature, and the divine. He says that he has more wealth than a noble with experience. And then he further encourages his mother in the last words of the essay to just focus on the people that are around her and just attempt to make their lives better so that she can find peace. So on Tranquility of Mind, to give you context, Serenus is a politician and he asks for Seneca's advice on how to not become burnt out and hate being a politician basically and Seneca comforts Serenus saying to do what he can as a politician and remain steadfast in the things that he believes. He talks about the burdens the wealthier place upon themselves that the wealth comes at a price that there's an exchange that comes with the responsibility of having wealth. Seneca also talks about how to consider your own nature when it comes to the work you prefer to do, whether you prefer to work alone or with a group of people. You should try to find your own nature and what you like the best and then try to create the most time that you can for that work. For me personally, I really like to work alone. I think I live very much like a philosopher. I like to toss ideas in my head and don't like that to be disturbed all too much. Unless it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a person, I really enjoy that too. He says that the people you surround yourself will either add to your peace of mind with simplicity, or they're going to poison your peace of mind with complaining and agitation. I honestly feel like social media is either one of the greatest tools that you can have, or it acts as a poison. Like, useless ideas can be tossed at you constantly to try to get an emotional reaction out of you, so you just keep consuming the same content over and over. And it doesn't leave space for ideas like I'm talking about. It doesn't leave space for information that you can actually utilize to better your own life and help other people with. Uh, I'm going to go on rant mode. I'm going to move on to my, my next point. <laughs> Seneca also just stresses a balance with all things, particularly wealth. He talks about you don't want to be poor, you want options, but you also don't want to be rich as that comes with too much responsibility for the individual. You want just a really healthy balance and honestly just a normal life. This leads to us using things that we own and we don't over acquire things or stand helplessly in our own power not actually seeing our own power and slowly decay away basically. You, you want a fine balance and this applies with everything. Even when it comes to books, I love to read but I can overindulge in books if I don't utilize the information that I'm reading. He talks about how people actually buy books for decoration in the time and don't utilize the information that's in the books that they're buying, which is really ironic because what's just sitting there collecting dust on their shelf could actually be something that completely changes their life and they don't even know it at the time. Something that we also need to accept, if you can't accept death, the farther up you go, the harder you're going to fall. Eventually, we all go back to nothing. If you don't acknowledge death, that decline could sneak up on you and everything could fall apart in a way that you don't want it to. Eventually, we are going to die. But accepting that, we can set this world to try to be a better place than before we left. Expectation is somewhat of a cursed thing when you place it into your work because you can either be 
completely flabbergasted surprised at the result or have a resentment and disgust if the work doesn't go out into the world the way you wanted it to. He just talks about the importance of keeping your expectations in check with the work so you're not taken off guard nor angry and resentful. Which I think if you just focus on the actions you take rather than the result then you don't really place an expectation on how it places into the world. It's just the routine and the actions that are the most important to you. Seneca talks about Julius Canis, who was a philosopher in Rome that was executed by Caligula. There's someone who spits in his face in the crowd, and he actually smiles at being spat in the face and says that he would basically hate being them, which is probably one of the most Chad moves. Philosophers are just sick. <laughs> But in being executed, he actually approached his own death with curiosity, saying that he hasn't experienced death. He doesn't know what death is like. And he enjoyed the irony of the situation. The words that Julius Canis was using at the time was really moving people, and yet he was being executed for his ideas. That being said, actually laughing from a situation shows the people around you that you have a hopeful spirit. Even yourself, when you laugh at mistakes you make, or the failures in your life, having an authentic laughter with it just shows that you just understand how life is sometimes, but that it doesn't determine your self-worth. But he ends the essay with saying, balance creates a well-being and is a never-ending conscious battle that you have to take on, and it's never-ending until the day you die. So you always have to be consciously striving for balance in your life. Clear until old age, this is the battle that we take on. It's either you're going to participate in it or you're not. And it's okay either or just to live a well, long-lasting life. We have to take on the burden of trying to find balance. But these are pretty much all the ideas that I took away from Seneca's book on the shortness of life. Our lives may be short in the grand scheme of things, but I really think we can find a really rich experience from our lives if we consciously approach everything that we choose to do. But anyway, I hope these ideas help somebody out there. I hope it makes sense. For people who follow the channel, uh, this is, is insider info. But right now, I'm trying to work on a main video for Tears of the Kingdom and combining it with a Japanese concept that I love very much. It's going to take me a while. Please just be patient with me. But I, I'm going to finish it, and then it's going to be sick as hell. I'm also working on another main video, but it's kind of went on the back burner so I can finish the Tears of the Kingdom one. But thank you so much. For listening to me rant about Seneca. I love philosophy. I'm going to keep talking about philosophy probably. Go give a family member a hug. If you see me. Uh, I don't know. Follow me on Instagram or something. You can see my face. You see me in public. Come and give me a hug. Say hey Cujo. What's up? What's good? <laughs> but yeah. I'm going to go play some more Tears of the Kingdom. Write that video. So thank you for watching. And goodbye now.